Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MXGP 2020. We're going to be using Jaeger Jürz and the Monster Energy Yamaha factory at MX2 into Schenthal, Germany. So here we are, we will be starting from the back of the grid in this German Grand Prix. Race 1 of 2, the grid girl says let's go and you know what, I agree. So let's crack on. Waiting for the grids to drop and uh, oh, a little bit early there but away we go. Race 1 is underway of this MX2 Racing Championship in this MXGP 2020 video game. Brilliant game so far. I'm really, really enjoying it as TK Olsen takes over at the front. I have been doing one MXGP video a week and I am still very much enjoying these videos. I hope you guys are too. I do intend to keep it going. There's a massive crash there for Thomas Vial. It's going to be difficult for him to get back into this Grand Prix. As, oh, I think he's, did he crash twice there? Or is it just a, a delay on the graphic on the left-hand side? As Ferrato has now gone past Yurtz. As Muse, Conrad Muse is up there. As Jed Beaton. And obviously Thomas Carl K. Olsen. Way ahead of the group already. Is he got a magnificent start. He got the start he wanted. The whole shot and the dream start. Brilliant stuff for him so far. We need to catch up on this Yamaha. So holding into the right-hand corner. Now we did struggle... With the turning in on some of these MX2 bikes, getting the brakes correct, went for a more aggressive braking style. And thankfully it does pay off here and there, but I do struggle here and there as well. Of course, still getting used to all of the bikes on MXGP 2020. And But as I mentioned earlier, I have been doing a MXGP video every Monday, because that is MXGP Monday. We will probably share MXGP Monday with Monster Energy Supercross, the official motocross video game for as that is coming out very, very soon. Comes out in just a couple of days, as a matter of fact, so expect a video and a review next week at some point. So, of course, Jed Beaton just ahead of us, Ferrato as well. Pretty certain we can chase them both down. It's just a matter of time. Got to get into the thick of things, get into the groove, watch out for the Monster Energy sign on the left-hand side there, and use everything we've got. I do struggle with keeping the momentum going on some of these MX2 bikes. I do feel that they're not as fast, or at least the AI is rather fast. Now, when we play Ride 4, the AI is pretty woeful on the straights as we get beaten by Harrison. We'll fought back, though. Jertz is back ahead of Mitchell Harrison, so that's not too bad. Well, at least we were able to respond. Missing the sort of uh, berm for us to take there. A little bit all over the place there. But compared to Ride 4, the AI is woeful on the straights. And here, the AI on MXGP seem to be brilliant on the straight, so it's, uh, it's a difficult one to get used to. I can't seem to get the proper speed on the straight. I can't seem to get the exit speed correct, but I can seem to get decent cornering. I did manage to win the MX2 World Championship just a couple of weeks ago, which was very pleased, and I did start my journey into MXGP after a couple of rounds in the playground. Appreciate that a lot of you guys enjoyed the playground video, so I'll probably do some more playground videos at some point. As this uh, battle for second place is certainly brewing now, it's certainly hotting up. As Ferrato, Jed Beaton, Conrad Muse all battling out, it's going to go a bit wide there. At least we avoided the Monster Energy sign, we would have been taken out if we did bump it. So good job so far. Breaking into the very tight right-hander here, and then again for the left-hander. Don't need to use too much brake there, but just try and aim it right, get it into the corner properly, and use the little bit of a jump if you need to here as another jump. Nicely executed so far. We're so close, but yet so far at the same time. We feel like we're gaining ground. And then in some corners and some areas, I just feel like I'm losing it again. So do what we can and continue to push forward as the race time has indeed expired. And once Thomas K. Olsen crosses the line once more, it will indicate just two more laps as we almost killed the marshal there. Thank goodness uh, we didn't bump him in the end. Would have immediately reset us on the track there, so you can't actually bump the marshals. Yes, it's a little bit of a feature as Thomas Gare Olsen does indeed set us off for the final two laps. Just two laps to the end. Not far now. <laughs> we're going to be keep doing what we can, but I don't think it's going to be that great. I, I, I don't think we're going to really advance from fifth place. We're doing our best, but it seems fifth place is here to stay. It's going to be in our future. Obviously, race two will be coming up in a moment's time. Fingers crossed the weather doesn't change, because, of course, I do enjoy this particular style. I'm not a big fan of the wet weather in MXGP. I love riding in the wet in Ride 4 and even in MotoGP, but not so much when it comes to MXGP, so we'll see how we get on. But fingers crossed it does remain to stay the same. Now, you don't get told, I don't believe, to see what the weather's going to be. There's no sort of indication until you actually start. We did, in fact, 
Can't pass Ferrato there, didn't mention. But we got through quite nicely, actually. I was quite impressed with that little bit of a manoeuvre as we got into the berm. Maybe Jed Beaton is still a target to beat. It's going to be tough, but we'll, we'll give it everything we've got, see what we can do for this MXGP Monday video. Thought I'd chuck in the MX2 bikes as well, because we haven't actually seen those yet. Or at least you guys haven't, if you haven't purchased the game yet. So I thought I'd change it up and go for Giertz. Oh, and the Monster Energy Yamaha. Really, really great bike. With a great rider. Thought it would be a banging combination, especially at this wonderful track to Shenthal. I do really like it here. It's one of the best tracks in the game and in real life. Of course, going into the berm, a little bit out of shape once more as Thomas Kerr Olsen is on the final lap of this race one of two. We'll be going across the finish line in just a moment's time as our lap time is a 131.816, which is miles behind Thomas Kerr Olsen. TK Olsen just dominating at the front. I don't think anyone's getting closer as Conrad Muse and Jed Beaton continue to battle for second place. I don't think we're going to get involved in that bit of a scrap. And I think that's your podium right there. But we do need to defend against Ferrato and Co. all hanging around behind. I think Mitchell Harrison's still in that group. But we did manage to get a great corner there. I'm really, really, really pleased with that one, actually. I'm quite impressed. We just, oh, we've got to keep fighting the motorcycle there. Oh, Muse had a bit of a moment there as well. Go for a shorter jump here, so we get into the decline. Get ready to push left, using both analog sticks to really push yourself around the corner. And the same again here. Beautiful stuff as you almost slid into the gravel there, or slid into the dirt. Thankfully, we did not this time. But I don't think we're going to catch up to any of these two. These two have put on a stellar performance. Not as stellar as TK Olsen, who is leading this Grand Prix and has been doing since the beginning. Look how far ahead he is on the graphic in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. He is dominating. Brilliant stuff from the man in first place. As we now jump, the big jump once more. Not many massive jumps in this one. So there's not really any places to do some funky scrubs, etc. But for the time being, race one is about complete. Thomas K. Olsen wins here into Schenthal. Wins the German race one. Comrade Muse to third place, and it looks like Jed Bean took second, and we are in fourth. So race one is complete. Thomas K. Olsen, Jed Beaton, Conrad Muse is your podium finishes. Diego Giertz and Thomas Vial somehow survived and took fifth. So back again, and yes, that is rain. So let's just crack on. Let's not dwell. Just do what we can. It's a great start as the grid drop there. See what we can do. Up into turn one. It's going to be a hectic one. As we get really stuck on the corner there. Old shot given to Giertz. Brilliant stars. We almost get bumped by Vial, I think it is. It's getting divo. It's actually Hofer. He is getting really involved there. He is really pushing as well as he can. As he takes the whole shot and the lead. Well, in fact, we got the whole shot, but he pretty much pinched it straight after. As we're going to land on top of him. Oh, my goodness. Thought we were going to land on top of him. Of old Rene. So we'll dive up in the inside when we get the chance by using the berm. But not yet. The KTM man is fearless. Brilliant start from Rene Hofer. We'll have to see what we can do with Diego Giertz. Oh, across the line now. We can't seem to get that jump correct. Unlike uh, some of the other riders, they can make that jump stick. So then they land into the decline. The perfect way to take a jump. So we're getting closer and closer to the man in first position. Great start, though. I've got to be honest. We did a brilliant start there. Whether we got the whole shot or not, I'm pleased with that start. And this sort of corner here, we're getting a lot of speed. Brilliant. Giertz in the lead. Ramming accidentally there. Love it. Love it so as we get bumped from the rear. And you can see we're really struggling to grip the motorcycle after that. The rear tyre just will not sit into the gravel properly. As we push over the big jump. Beautifully done. Be careful not to jump too high there. Because you will crash on upon the landing. Now, in this one, I'm dropping it down to second gear more often than the first race. And I'm finding that is making a dramatic difference in some of these corners. We get in the middle here. You don't want to be in the middle. You want to be sort of on either one side or the other. It's going to go a little bit wide here. Oh, careful, careful. Not bad. Avoiding the Monster Energy sign where the whole shot was just earlier. And we are in the lead with only one minute and ten seconds remaining before the two laps or the final two laps are occurring. Underneath the city sign we go. Rene Hofer is somewhere. Oh, there he is. He popped up on the screen at the perfect position there. But he would be a better position if he stays behind Giertz and stays second. That would be a better position for him. So, oh, goodness me. We got a bit of a slide there. I think we got bumped or the bike just gripped 
at the worst possible time. The rain has indeed stopped, so we have a beautiful track situation now because this is either going to be good or bad. I mean, we're quite used to the wet already, but at the same time, as this dries out, we'll be getting used to it and getting a better feel upon, on board this Yamaha, so we'll see how we get on, of course. Let's go through the next little jump here. If we can nail that properly and nail these couple of corners in this sector here, we're in for a good time, and I think we are. I think Giertz has definitely got this one. Going for the tighter line opposed to the longer outside line. Nice little jump there as Ferrato now takes second place from Hofer. Now, as it stands, according to the Grand Prix results of race one, I do believe if we win here and Jed Beaton stays where he is and Thomas Vial doesn't uh, come through, we could very well... Oh, and also Conrad Muse and uh, TK Olsen, of course. But we very well could be winning this Grand Prix. Race 2 victory could be what we need. The fourth place in a Race 2 victory is bloody good in my book. And it's been a while since Dr. Ray stood on the top step of the podium in an MXGP Monday video, so... I I'm hoping this is the one. I'm feeling good about it, holding 30 miles per hour as we jump over this one. Nice little few couple of bumps here. You've got to be careful. You don't want to be pushing too hard. You don't want to be always pushing down on the throttle. In the race one, I was too eager on the throttle too many times and the bike just could not grip. But here in race two, doing much, much better here. Just, just pulling the throttle just maybe half or three quarters of the way opposed to just holding it down. Much better stuff as Giertz now sets us off for the final two laps. Really good stuff, and we did set a very, very good lap time there. I'm not sure if we set the the 131.635. I think we might have done, because that is a damn decent lap. I'm very impressed with that one, but we are getting caught up now by Ferrato. Of course, we had a bit of a battle with him in race one. I don't want to be fancy breaking... Oh, bloody hell. I don't want to be breaking my back fighting him again, but we had a moment there in that corner. Thankfully, we, <laughs> we survived, and we stayed on both two wheels, as Ferrato is eight tenths of a second down behind Giertz. We'll continue to do what we do best, and that is lead this Grand Prix. Six tenths of a second separate us now. He is coming. The Italian is charging. And to do what we can, though, avoid anyone pinching the lead. We definitely look more comfortable leading this Grand Prix than we did when chasing down the leader. Now, in the other games, I much prefer chasing down. I find that much better. But here, I'm getting in the zone, really focusing on the riding and just doing what we do best. And that's just giving it 100%. Classic Dr. A style. The gap has gone up to 9 tenths of a second for Giertz. We could be in a good position here, but he is right on the rear of us now. That one moment in that corner just really ruined our momentum. But Giertz, uh, Hof is there as well. Just got to see what we can do. One lap of remaining in just a moment's time. This is going to be a slow lap from us. We're going to really pull something out of the bag here if we want to maintain this victory position. Our lap time is pretty bad. It's a 133.275. The pressure's getting to us now. A little bit wide on the exit of that jump there, but great berm there. Can we get the decline of that jump? We couldn't. Focus, really give it everything you've got. Drop it down to second gear if we need to going over these little jumps. Nailed the decline there. Brilliant stuff. Hold it left. Watch out for the couple of bumps. Keep pushing it backwards, forwards. Shake it all about. Trying to get this uh, Yamaha and to stay level to stay just stay planted it's very difficult and now our advantage is 1.7 seconds i think this is a damn decent job and i think that's it it's now gone up to 2.5 seconds actually we've got this one this is a phenomenal lap if we can keep it going flick it left in a moment's time watch out for not cutting the corner though because the game can be quite brutal when it comes to cutting corners but look at that lead on the graphic down below i am very impressed with that one we're certainly giving it everything we've got here. I am very, very impressed. Great job from Dr. Ace and the gang. Good stuff for Jago Giertz. Jago Giertz. Jago. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think it's Jago. Shout out to him anyway. Doing a wonderful job on this Yamaha. Little bit of a jump here. Not too high. Drop it down to second gear. Push out. Go over these couple of bumps. Get ready to jump in that berm. Beautiful. That is beautiful execution. What manoeuvre could possibly be smoother? Then a victory here for Dr. Ace and Jago Giertz. Dominating fashion. What a lap time. So those are your results for race two. Giertz, Hofer, Ferrato, Jet Beaton, Harrison is your top five. What a lap we set on the final lap there. A 139.72.
Your Grand Prix results are in, and Diego Schiertz wins by three points just over Jed Beaton, and Rene Hoover is a further three points behind. Brilliant stuff, and that is another Doctor Ace victory in the MXGP Monday series. So guys, thank you very much for watching as always. Like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the notification bell if you haven't done already and I will see you next time. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.